Hello and welcome back to another web development video. Today I'm talking about separation of concerns for beginners, uh, specifically applied to a model view controller pattern. Uh, this is a very common pattern seen in a lot of frameworks. Uh, and if you aren't familiar with it, I'm not gonna go too much uh, into what a model view controller pattern is, uh, but it's, it's fairly simple. It's essentially how the data from, uh, from your computer uh, goes from the browser or user interface, uh, connects to the database, and then goes back to your browser. So the great thing about this model is it's really easy to look at, um, to use this as kind of uh, a way to see how separation of concerns works. So I wanna start out with kind of the dictionary definition of separation of concerns. So separation of concerns is a design principle for separating programming into distinct sections so that each section addresses a specific separate concern uh, or a set of information that affects that program. So what do I mean by this? What I'm talking about here is if you have your user interface browser, let's say it's Chrome or Firefox or whatever you want it, and if you send in data to a form, well, that data is gonna go through the framework into the database, and then likely is gonna return something back all the way back to your browser or user interface. Now, inside of a model view controller or MVC pattern, it's gonna go through a bunch of different modules. And these modules are exactly what um, separation of concerns are, right? So you have in an MVC, pattern, you have the model, the view, controller, you have a database, and all this stuff right here connects to your browser. So when you're looking at this, if you're not familiar with it, this controller here is going to talk to the model and it's gonna to talk to the view and these things, specifically the model, are also gonna to connect to the database. If all of this code is inside of one module, it makes it very difficult to update that specific module. So you could potentially have one file that has all of this code in it. What you want to do ideally is you want to break out every single one of these modules into a different file, specifically based on what their function is. And the reason you wanna do that is, is that these things are gonna to talk to each other separately. So if you have an issue or if you wanna make an update or if you want to make a code change, one, you can easily find it, right? I know that uh, the form that I wanna update is in a specific area. Um, so I can find it. So then I can go to it and I can go to that specific module and go, okay, I want to update module one here, whatever that is. And then from there, I can see how that affects everything else. I don't have to go searching through everything. And there's a lot of great reasons for this, but essentially the two main benefits are module upgrade, right? Module reuse and independent development, and it's more maintainable. So you can update just one module, like I was saying. You can reuse one module to do multiple things, and you can have multiple people work on the same project at the same time. Now, this is gonna require a few more lines of code, specifically because you're just breaking them out into files. These, think of all of these as a different file right here. So you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, you know, six files here instead of just one, and that's gonna require some code to connect these files in between them. But in general, this is best practice. This is what you want to do. So let's go through an example of it. Let's say there needs to be an update to a program, whatever this form is. We'll just say it's the form in our earlier example that we want to upgrade. So first of all, we think about what code needs to be changed in that upgrade. So if your program behaviors are separated, only the code that will update the specific behavior of that program will need to be touched versus all of the code, right? So you only need to update that one file we already discussed. 
Then you also need to know how is that going to be changed? Well, if it's separated nicely with a separation of concerns, then only some of the program needs to be understood. So me as a developer, I don't need to know how everything works right here. I just need to know how this works, which means I just need to open up one file and say, okay, this is how this one file works. Also, another thing to think about is how will this change affect the other program features? Well, I can predict based on this one file, I know what this one file does right here. I don't need to know how these files, what these files do. And based off of that, I can predict what the change is going to do. So I can know, okay, well, all my form is going to do here. All I'm doing is uh, I'm just adding a field to my form right here. Well, I don't need to go hunting for that. And I can specifically know, okay, all I'm doing is, is updating this one field. And I also know that that's going to affect some other things based on, on how that general pattern goes. So I know to go from there, I know to update my model, and then I can update my view and possibly update my database. And I know that specifically because we're using separation of concerns in a model view controller. If this was all one giant custom web page that somebody had made, it's going to take me a lot longer to figure out how it works. So then lastly, if program behaviors are separated, then it's more likely that this newly coded program, it can be, or file, this can be reused in different areas, right? So if, if, if my, my file here, I can reuse this somewhere else. I can have this connect potentially to something else. So that follows the do not repeat yourself pattern, the DRY or dry pattern, where essentially it says that if, if you can break everything down into um, little bits that can be reused, well, that's, that's way simpler. And that's what you want to do. It's much more efficient and it's going to be make, making uh, bug hunting a lot, lot simpler. So inside of here, think about what can you break up when you're thinking about separation of concerns when you're programming? What can you take and break down into the smallest modules. And that's pretty much it. That's the best way I think to, to think about this, specifically as a beginner, if you haven't seen um, what separation of concerns are. Um, it's kind of a fancy term for just saying like, I'm gonna modularize, modularize, right? Is that a word? I think it's a word, close enough. I'm gonna make everything into little different separate files, if you were. I'm gonna make everything into different modules and then I'm gonna connect them. And then from there, I'm gonna gain all the benefits of doing that. So I hope you've found this uh, informative. And if you like this type of content, please go ahead and give me a subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.